Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, have you ever heard of an acoustic neuroma, also called a vestibular schwannoma? Not not until just recently. What, who? Did I? Well, you know somebody our who has producer's one? sister-in-law has one, yes. No kidding. Well, yes. they're rare. There's <laughs> only about two or 3,000 that are diagnosed every year in the U.S. An acoustic neuroma, or a vestibular schwannoma, is a benign, usually slow-growing tumor that develops on the main nerve that connects your inner ear with your brain. And here to tell us more about it, the symptoms, the diagnosis, why does it have two names, (laughs) the treatment too, is Mayo Clinic Ear, Nose, and Throat Specialist, Dr. Matthew Carlson. Welcome to the program, Dr. Carlson. Thank you for having me. So why does it have two names? So it's an antiquated term. The old term is acoustic neuroma, and that came from the idea that it came from the hearing nerve and that it was a neuroma coming from the nerve itself. Benign neuroma is benign nerve tumor. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And over time, we've realized that when we've, uh, as we cited, when we realized it actually comes from, so the eighth cranial nerve, or the, uh, the hearing nerve, actually has three parts to it. It has two balanced nerves and one hearing nerve. And when you look at them more closely, you re- you'll realize that most of these tumors are actually coming from the vestibular portion of the eighth nerve. So that's where the vestibular comes in. And they actually come from a growth on the outside of the nerve, the insulatory fibers of the nerve, and that's what the Schwann cells are. So the, the technically correct name is vestibular schwannoma. So all of the nerves have a surrounding sheath, kind of like insulation on a wire. And in that that sheath are the Schwann cells, and that's where the term schwannoma comes from. Exactly. Now, fortunately, this is a benign tumor, but rare. You must not, even at the Mayo Clinic, see that many every year. So it's interesting you bring that up. Historically, you've always said acoustic neuromas or vestibular schwannomas are very rare, but there's a lot of emerging evidence that says they're much more common than previously. That's probably been driven by the uh, greater access to MRI and also uh, screening protocols for asymmetrical hearing loss. And there's a recent study that we performed at the Mayo Clinic that actually determined that um, about one in 500 adults over the age of 70 will acquire an acoustic neuroma during their lifetime um, and one in 2,000 adults. So it's more common than we previously thought. It's just not being diagnosed? Um, you know, they're, they are being diagnosed with greater frequency. The, there's a lot of people that are walking around with them uh, that you wouldn't know necessarily have them. More particularly in recent years, they're, they tend to be smaller at diagnosis with less symptoms. Uh, and actually, the age demographic is increasing. So people are, tend to be older when they're diagnosed. So it, it's not uncommon that a person might have headaches or something like that, and they get an MRI scan, and they get an incidental diagnosis. So they weren't expecting to see that tumor there. And actually, about one in five or one in six tumors are diagnosed that way right now. Hmm. So if you do have symptoms, if it grows large enough, that, what, what are those symptoms? Yeah, so the most common symptom is asymmetrical hearing loss or one Meaning ear. one-sided. Hmm. Yeah, so one ear hears worse than the other ear. And then the second most common symptom is ringing in the ear. And hearing loss and ringing kind of go hand in hand. Less commonly, a person might experience imbalance. And even more uncommonly, you can experience vertigo where you have the sensation of the room spinning around. And what about treatment? Once you discover this, uh, does treatment depend on size and symptoms? Yeah, exactly. So um, probably the two primary things that determine the uh, the direction of treatment are the number one thing is size without question. And the second thing is probably patient age and comorbidities and patient preference. So when we talk- Comorbidities meaning other diseases, other medical conditions. They might make it more difficult for them to have surgery or some other treatment. And so when we talk about the treatment of a, of a vestibular schwannoma, we really have to kind of talk about three different size categories. The first is the very small tumor. And the very small tumor is typically something a centimeter or a centimeter and a half or less in size. Patients with a tumor that size can either have observation, so you just get serial imaging, you get MRIs over time to see if it grows. And if it doesn't grow, you can just continue to watch it. Or you can get radiation treatment, and typically radiation treatment is done through the gamma knife, and that's a single out, a single day outpatient treatment with pretty low risk. Gamma knife. Gamma knife. Yep. Can you explain that? Yeah. So gamma knife is a, a procedure that was actually originally developed in Sweden um, in the 1950s and 60s, and it's been really refined since that time. In the United States, Mayo Clinic has the third gamma gamma knife unit that's ever been opened. Gamma knife uses a stereotactic head frame. So it's basically a small cage that's put on the head for a very short period of time. And that allows you to triangulate the tumor exactly in three-dimensional space and treat it with very low doses of radiation over an hour or so. Um, so it's precise radiation. Very precise radiation, exactly. Mm-hmm. So just it, it touches the tumor and it really has minimal impact on the surrounding uh, structures. You know, even when a tumor is very small, 
it's really close to important things. We say it's an area of high real estate, and so <laughs> all the treatments are really focused to to treat the tumor and not affect surrounding structures. What about proton beam? Is that s similar or different? Uh, so, you know, the benefit of proton beam is there's something called the Bragg peak effect where the um, entrance dose is moderate, the dose at the tumor site is greater, but there's little exit dose. So that the idea is that you can be very focused in your radiation. It, that um, proton beam is very effective for certain types of skull-based tumors, so tumors at the skull. But interestingly, at least the, the data so far suggests that gamma knife is a better modality or better platform for with when you're talking about radiation for a vestibular schwannoma. So you've got the smallest tumors, which you do a lot of watchful waiting on. Yeah, watchful waiting or radiation, or you can have surgery. The primary benefit of doing surgery on a very small tumor is if the person still has good hearing, you have an opportunity to intervene and maybe remove the tumor and save hearing. And that's a very controversial topic, but that's one of the main arguments for operating on a small tumor. All right, so what about the tumors that are a little larger? So once you exceed that 1.5 centimeter threshold, in most situations, then you're talking about some form of treatment, not just watching it anymore. And the idea is that once it starts getting much bigger than that, then you're starting to get into a different area, more complications and things. So um, at that point, you either choose radiation or surgery. And once you get over about two and a half centimeters or three centimeters, we say really there's only one main strategy, and that's surgical removal. And the idea is if it's already two and a half or three centimeters, if you treat it with radiation, even if radiation is successful, it often causes a little bit of swelling initially when it's treated. And that little bit of swelling can cause a problem when it's already that size. And so typically a tumor over two and a half, three centimeters, you're treating it with surgery. And when you, I'm kind of making it sound very simple, like it's just observation, <laughs> microsurgery or radiation. But in reality, there's all these different directions within those therapies that you can actually go down. So it's a little bit complex. Are you um, less likely to uh, have hearing loss if you do the surgery as opposed to the radiation? That's a really good question. That's a really, really controversial. It depends on whether you're a radiation therapist or a surgeon. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's certain groups that believe uh, different things, and they've published um, you know, different outcomes that might suggest one direction or the other. The general rule of thumb is if you have a smaller tumor and you have good hearing, probably your best chance at staying the way you are the longest, meaning having the hearing you have is probably just watching it, but it probably will go down over time, over, slowly over time in most situations. Mm. If you get radiation, it's unlikely to develop a sudden hearing loss from the radiation. Your hearing loss will, will also go down, but probably a little bit faster than if you just observed it. So there's some radiation effect to the tumor. With surgery, it's kind of an upfront risk. If you win that gamble up front, then you're probably gonna retain it longer. But with surgery for a really small tumor, the odds are about 50-50 for saving hearing on a small tumor. So if you, if you, if you do surgery, you might wake up with no, non-functional hearing. But if you do win that, that, that lottery, then you're more likely to retain it longer than if you did observation or radiation. At least that's what most people think. Do these tumors ever turn malignant into cancer? That's a, that's a very good question. By themselves, so uh, being untreated, the chance of that's very, very low. There's probably a very, very small risk that with radiation it can change it into a, tu into a malignancy or a cancer. But even that risk is really low. We, we put it in the category of about 1 in 10,000 risk, so extremely low. Pretty small. All right, acoustic neuroma, also called a vestibular schwannoma, and I guess that's per the preferred name now? It is. Yeah. All right, it's a rare benign tumor of the nerve that connects your inner ear to your brain, but as we've just heard, it may affect as many as one out of 500 people over the age of 70. Exactly. The most common symptoms include hearing loss on one side, tinnitus or ringing in the ear on the affected side, and balance problems. Fortunately, multiple treatment options, most of which are successful. Our thanks to ENT specialist, Dr. Matthew Carlson. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Dr. Carlson.